This is part 84 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to retrieve all the registered users of our application from the identity database and display them on a view using the ASP.NET Core Identity API. Our list users view should look like the following. If you have been following along with this course, in our previous videos in this series, we discussed how to retrieve the list of all roles and display them as you can see right here. At the moment, when we navigate to slash administration slash list roles, we see the list of all roles. Similarly, when we navigate to slash administration slash list users, we want to see the list of all users. What we're going to do now is going to be very similar to what we have already done retrieving and displaying these roles. So in the interest of time, instead of making you watch everything that I type, I'm going to be pasting code and walk you through the important bits. As usual, I'll include the source code, text version of this video and slides on my blog and include the relevant links in the description of this video so you can copy and paste the code if required. Now. The first thing that we want to do is include list users action method within the administration controller. So let's flip over to Visual Studio. Our administration controller is right here. List users action method is going to be very similar to this create role action method. So let's make a copy of this and then change the name of the method here to list users. We want this method to retrieve the list of all registered users of our application. The registered users are in this ASP.NET Core Identity Database table, ASP.NET Users. So if we view the data in this table, at the moment, we've got four users. To retrieve these users, we are going to make use of the built-in ASP.NET Core User Manager Service. User Manager Service is already injected into our administration controller. So to retrieve the list of all users on the User Manager Service, We've got users property, which is going to return us the list of all users. Let's store it in a variable called users and then let's pass this variable to the view. Our obvious next step is to include list users view in the administration subfolder in the views folder. We want to add a razor view and let's name our razor view list users. Now, if we take a look at the users variable, it contains I queryable of application user, which is what we are passing to the view. So for our list users view, the model is going to be I enumerable of application user because I queryable implements I enumerable. Next, we want to set the page title to all users and I want to include a conditional check here. So if model dot any So if there are any users in the model, then we want to display them on our view, as you can see right here. Else, we want a bootstrap for card with a card body and card header. Inside the card header, we want to display this text, no users created yet. In the card body, we want card title with this text. Use the button below to create a user and then a button to actually create a new user. The code to create a new user is present within the register action of our account controller. So when this button is clicked, we are redirecting the user. If there are users in the model that is passed to the view, then we want to display the list of all users. Each user details are being displayed using a bootstrap for card, as you can see right here. In the card header, we are displaying user ID. User ID is non-editable, so we keep it disabled. In the card body, we are just displaying username, but you can also display other user fields like email, CT, etc. if you want to. And in the card footer, we have edit and delete buttons. We'll implement these two buttons in our upcoming videos. And then finally, at the top, we have this add new user button which allows us to create a new user if we want to. In the if block, let me paste some code. This anchor element here is for the add new user button. When we click this button, we want to send the user to the register action of our account controller because that's where we have the code to add a new user. And then we are using the for each loop to loop through each user in the model and as we are looping through we are displaying the user id in the card header username in the card body and in the card footer we have edit and delete buttons we'll implement editing and deleting users in our upcoming videos for now let's run this project and see what we've got so far 
At the moment, we are on the home page. Let's navigate to slash administration slash list users. There we go. We see the list of all of our registered users as expected. Now, when we click on this manage roles navigation menu item, we send the user to slash administration slash list roles and we see the list of all roles. Similarly, we want manage users navigation menu item and we want these two menu items to be only displayed if the user is signed in and if that signed in user is in the admin role. At the moment, we are logged in using the username presume at presume .com, and we know this user is in the admin role. So we are displaying manage roles and we want these two menu items manage roles and manage users to be displayed using a drop down as you can see right here and when we click on this drop down navigation menu item we want to show these two options users and roles and here is the code required for that this code is again straightforward nothing new here we are using the asp.net core built-in sign-in manager service to check if the user is signed in and if that signed in user is in the admin role if that's the case we have some HTML and bootstrap for styling classes to get this navigation menu item so for the drop down we are using this anchor element and all these classes that you see here are the bootstrap for styling classes so this anchor element provides us this drop down menu manage and this div here with these two anchor elements provides us these two options users and roles when we click on the users navigation menu item we want to send the user to the list users action within the administration controller and when we click on roles we want to send the user to list roles within the administration controller and we know this navigation menu is in our layout view so let's flip over to visual studio this is our layout view list and create navigation menu items are right here i'm going to replace this code block with a code block that we have just seen on the slide save our changes and take a look at the browser Notice now in the navigation menu, we have manage drop down and when we click on roles, we see the list of roles. Similarly, when we click on users, we see the list of users. Now we've got a small issue here. Let me show what the issue is. At the moment, we are logged in using the username presume at presumetech.com. We know this user is in the admin role. Now let's click add new user. Notice we are redirected to slash account slash register. Let's register a new user using this email let's provide password and confirm password let's specify the city as London at the moment we are still logged in using this admin username prajim at prajimtech.com now when we click this register button this new user will be registered and we will be automatically logged in with this new user username look at this when I click register there we go we have our new user created and if we take a look at ASP.NET users database table, we have a new user with the username xyz at presumetech.com created. And if we take a look at our application, notice we are automatically logged in with that new user username. And we do not want this behavior. If we are logged in using an admin username and when we create a new user, we want to stay logged in as that admin user. And the code to register a new user is within the account controller. So let's flip over to account controller within Visual studio here is the HTTP post register action after we call create async method we are checking if that operation is successful meaning if the user is successfully created we are then signing in using that new user and we only want to do this if we are not already logged in so just about these two lines of code I'm going to include another if block so if we are already signed in and if that signed in user is in the admin role then redirect the user to the list users action within the administration controller if we are not signed in then these lines of code will be executed let's save our changes and take a look at the browser at the moment we are not logged in let's register a new user as an anonymous user let's use this email and provide the values for the rest of the fields as well If we click this register button now, because we are not logged in, this if block will be skipped and we will be automatically logged in using the new user username. So let's click the register button. Notice we are automatically logged in using the new user username. And this is fine in this flow because we are not already logged in as an admin user. 
if we are logged in as an admin user, this if condition will return true. So we redirect the user to the list users action of the administration controller. So the admin user can see the user that he has just created. Let's test this flow now. Let's log out and log back in as an admin. We are logged in. Let's register a new user. Provide values for all the required fields. Notice our new user is created and we are still logged in as the same admin user. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss implementing, editing and deleting users. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.